It's time for another episode of Eureka Street Crypto Hub, brought to you from Leander, Texas. And it is 5.52 in the morning on Tuesday, October 12th, 2021. And yeah, this is my video blog. This is what I do. I'm Eureka John, and I just get on and talk about stuff I've learned in crypto on a day-to-day -day basis every single morning. Have not skipped a single morning since February 6, 2021, and I've been doing this broadcast for almost a year now since October 24th, 2020. So this is episode, what is it? Episode 293. So moving on up, you know, stacking them up. And uh, every morning, got my kombucha, got my apple, my banana, and... Um, Got my uh, head full of stuff to talk about in the crypto space. Not always, uh, like today. Um, I mean, I have a lot of stuff to talk about, but I don't have it organized in my head. And that's kind of what this show's about. It's it's really about, about me trying to articulate stuff that I'm learning every single day outwardly. Because you can read stuff and you'll learn it, but do you really know it and understand it? And uh, you having to articulate that verbally outside of you really solidifies that knowledge, I think. And um, yeah, that's what I've been practicing the entire year. Um, so yeah, this is not financial advice and I'm not your teacher and I'm not shilling anything. This is just uh, me talking about some stuff and I could be wrong, I could be right. It could be mind blowing knowledge or it could be mind numbing um, with boredom. So <laughs> you never know which way the show is gonna go. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to look at some prices here, and I'm not making predictions. I'm just looking at price because uh, it's just kind of an exercise I do every day to kind of warm up and also to kind of just kind of like say, hey, I looked at the price for the day, and I, oh, I've been seeing kind of long-term trends and stuff like that, <clears throat> patterns, and, uh, you know, not even really intentionally finding patterns, but you know, I might notice, you know, oh yeah, um, quant network seems to go opposite of Bitcoin, you know, just because I see it on a day to day basis. Um, so, all those are the things you pick up uh, whenever you look at something every single day. <clears throat> so, Bitcoin $57,226.73. Um, moving on up to the old east side, um, and then. Ethereum, $3,458.48, up 2.2% in the past seven days. Um, Tether, dollar one, it says a stable coin. <laughs> it's a dollar one, yay. Uh, it's a, it's a, little, uh, a little over right now, uh, dollar. So Cardano, 209, Binance coin, 396.45, XRP, dollar eight. Solana, 141.57, Polkadot. 3271 USDC. It's a dollar because it's a stable coin. The Doge still lingering in there at 10th place. We've got two meme coins, the Doge and Shiba Inu right here. Um, yeah, all right. You need to get the dogs out of the house here. You know, just kick them out. They're pooping on the floor. Um, so Terra, 3636 Binance USD. It's a stable coin, a dollar. Wrapped Bitcoin. Um, fifty-seven thousand two hundred seventy-six dollars. It's wrapped Bitcoin. It's it's Bitcoin on Ethereum. It's wrapped. Um, <clears throat> that's what wrapped Bitcoin is. It's people that have Bitcoin that want to put it to work besides just price appreciation. So they borrow against it. They um go through things like uh uh I was it um I can't remember how, the name is slipping me. It, it, the name is escaping me right now. Um. Is a custodial one, and you know, somebody like me couldn't use that one. But uh, then there's other ones like, um, uh, what is it? Why can't I think of the name of it? WBTC Cafe. Yeah, WBTC Cafe. And people take their Bitcoin there. They uh, put them, they, they connect their wallet, and they, uh, they wrap their Bitcoin. They send their Bitcoin to WBTC Cafe. It wraps it on Ethereum. It locks up the Bitcoin. And then there, people have the wrapped Bitcoin, the WBTC, that they can use in DeFi applications 
to um, yield farm, um, to borrow against, or whatever they want to do, you know. And uh, yeah, that that's wrapped Bitcoin for people. Um, Bitcoin maximalists, they don't like the idea of anybody locking or holding your your Bitcoin for you uh, or any representations of the Bitcoin because it's not the actual Bitcoin in their eyes. Um, so the purists hate it, but uh, it is a way for somebody to put their Bitcoin to work. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Uniswap, 2267. Litecoin, 17002. Avalanche, 5188. Um, Avalanche is an alternative to Ethereum. And I think I said on a show Sunday, there will be no alternative or Ethereum killers. Um, I think all roads, all blockchains lead to Ethereum. All the, the, you know, the blockchains, Avalanche, Terra, Zilliqa, Solana, um, Cosmos, you name it. They're all building bridges to Ethereum and uh, not the other way around, you know. Um, so Ethereum, I think, in the future will be the settlement layer. It'll be the place where the whales and the institutions play. And then we're all going to go to these other blockchains that specialize in certain industries or niches or layer two solutions where the gas prices will be small. And I know Ethereum 2.0 is coming out and the gas prices might be reduced, but I still think layer two solutions will provide as a, a, a sort of savings in a way and a more and a lot of apps a lot of the the little um you know DeFi apps and on um quick moving apps will be still be built uh, i mean we're building them on layer two right now and i don't think that they're going to go anywhere i think a lot of that infrastructure is going to be built over there and then just the settlement and the big whale stuff is just going to be on ethereum layer one i mean i don't know for sure but that's just kind of where i'm thinking anyway speaking of layer two solutions matic is a dollar 17 um, everything's a little red right now. Um, nothing to worry about. I mean, I don't worry about it anyway. Um, <clears throat> Theta Network, five seventy four. dollars um, Hedera Hashgraph, $32. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Quant Network, two seventy seven eighty four. dollars So yeah, everything's turning a little red right now. Um, except for Olympus, the Ohm token. Um, that was shooting up 23% um, in the past seven days. I did a video kind of talking about it the other day. And uh, yeah, uh, Ohm Token is looking really good right now. Um, so I'm going to try to buy in. I'm looking for a dip. <laughs> this is like one of the only ones here in the green, <laughs> you know, like maybe in the past 24 hours. But uh, yeah, that's down 0.6%. Anyway, it's not really what I was going to talk about today. But, uh, you know, it's interesting stuff. I, I like looking at the, the, the market rankings and stuff like that, you know, not to make price predictions or try to day trade but just uh yeah it, it, it's like looking at whenever i would open up the newspaper in the 90s and stuff like that and i wouldn't really read a bunch of articles i would go straight back to the baseball stats and i would look to see where the teams are ranking for the day you know um how are my astros doing you know so oh all right okay so let's go to the old tweet space um i bookmarked um I, I, my twitter profile says dad skateboarder futurist and i am a futurist i love learning about new technologies that's coming out and uh, where things are going with that new technology and this whole metaverse idea the metaverse has become like the new buzzword you know like ai was um DeFi, um you know even blockchain you know back in the day everything was blockchain you know oh it's going to go on the blockchain yeah and then oh well ai is going to take care of it now it's the metaverse yeah Oh, it's going on the metaverse, you know, so, um, yeah, um, there's a lot of projects that are claiming to be part of the metaverse, um, how deep they are or related they are. That's, you know, to be determined. Oh, I don't follow this guy. Andrew, Adriano Faria, um, software engineer, BA in economic economics and computer science raised in Brazil. Okay. Uh, this guy puts out some pretty good threads and, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, this one thread, and there's another thread I want to read later on, but this one's talking about some of the new technologies um, in VR. And you know, you, right now, in order to enter the metaverse, yeah, you can enter the metaverse on your desktop, but you can also put them on um, your face, as in the Oculus glasses. And if you've ever read or watched Ready Player One, you see that kid kind of lives in, in cyberspace in the metaverse. And uh, all his interactions in the metaverse are also affecting his daily life um, in the outside real world as well. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, he says a wave of new te technologies is coming in the next 12 months that will take VR into the next level. Um, I've never used an Oculus, honestly, to be honest. Uh, 
Um, I probably should because I talk about it a lot. But I, I mean, honestly, I just I, I've never really been around them. I've, I, I, it's just something weird about like putting something on my face and then not knowing what's going on in the room around me and just being absorbed in this virtual war world without because like for instance i see a skateboarder at the skate park and they put in their earbuds and, and they're skateboarding around but i like to hear the sound of grinding and that the wheels going stuff like that and then if i can hear a kid coming my way so i don't slam into him my 225 pound butt rolling over some you know 50 pound kid or whatever you know like i gotta you gotta watch out and be careful you know, and the same thing applies to this clunky device just being put on somebody's face and then they just completely, um, the headphones and they completely withdraw from the real, real world. Uh, maybe I'm paranoid. Maybe I just want, but I want to know what's going on around me physically. Yeah. Even if I'm in a little room, you know, what if somebody breaks in the house? I don't know. But uh, anyway, he says the new wave of technologies is coming in the next 12 months that will take VR into the next level. Rich social interactions with persistent and permanent digital property. And then he puts in parentheses VR plus cryptos and NFTs um, will change the world forever. And now for a taste of things to come. And then he's the thread. You know, it reminds me, somebody wrote put some satire thing about the thread or, you know, <laughs> maybe makes a thread about everything. Uh, well, this guy makes good threads. So anyway, <clears throat> um, real time capture of eyes and facial expression. Um, so yeah, in these worlds right now, everything looks a little latent and kind of that doesn't really have any like super detail in the graphics. If you go into central land or if you go in Somnium space or crypto voxels, Somnium space is actually getting you know, really good. Um, it's a, a sandbox. Um, so eye contact and facial expressions are critical for nonverbal communication. Next gen VR headsets will come equipped with sensors to track in real time. So let's take a look at these next gen yes. VR headsets. Including puffing cheeks, biting lips, moving tongues, and details like wrinkles that are hard to be precisely animated for previous methods. So that's pretty cool. That's her animated face on the screen there. So it's Facebook's prototype VR face tracking got even better. Our goal is to train an encoder to convert input images to a facial expression code in real time. This code will be later decoded to a 3D avatar. However, there's no trivial way to get precise correspondence between input and output as training data. To solve this problem, we built another headset with six additional cameras at more accommodating positions to help establish correspondence. Once we correspond the nine view images with the avatar, we can simply drop additional views to get the training data we need. We use the idea of analysis right, by so seeing yeah, they're going approach. into the weeds. If you're interested, I'm going to link this thread in the comments below and not in the in the description below. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it kind of gives you an idea. The technology is getting really good to to track facial expressions. Um, you know, I just think about the whole idea of the metaverse, and then there's people that are now. I'm in, I'm in conversation with some people that are doing stuff like building land and building um, uh, conference rooms, and then people are having concerts um, in the metaverse, for instance, in Decentraland, or uh, they're having dance parties, they're having um, uh, uh, podcasts, live podcasts. Um, somebody's working on that right now um, that I'm in conversation with as well. So people will go to these events and they will go to the, the said property where that event happens and they get to watch the podcast in, uh, in the metaverse and then you hear it as it goes on or people like bands. Um, I can't remember what band did this recently, uh, but there was a band that plugged their instruments in and then they had their avatars and they were on the stage playing their instruments, but you know, they were in their studio playing their instruments but you got to hear them playing their instruments real time as if in a concert. So um, pretty cool stuff. And then with this new type of tracking technology, you know, as you'll see here, um, it's getting more and more detailed. So it really will almost seem as if it is that, you know, actual person and band. So let's see here, made a human face link test, uh, live link face test in Unreal Engine. So, so this is this is the guy. This is the guy being tracked by the camera, and this is his avatar, which is a female. Look at that. It's pretty incredible. 
Yeah, and uh, I think I've shown you the GPT-3 AI bot as well um, that the computer generated uh, avatar and, and uh, person talking and then talking about how he feels alive and talking about what it means to be alive. This is an AI engine talking about what it feels like to be alive, talking about what lies are, talking, you know, it's inter and none of this is scripted. It's, it's not this, but, you know, the one I was talking about. It's not scripted. It's an AI thinking about this stuff or, or thinking, you know, processing its own information and figuring out and asking questions and trying to answer what lies are and what existence is and what it means to be alive and stuff like that. So it's creepy stuff. And then here's improved hand tracking and full body tracking. Some of the current VR headsets already have basic hand tracking, but next gen devices will be more precise and may introduce full body tracking to offer an even wider range of facial expressions. All right, so let's look at some of the hand tracking here with the Oculus. All right, watch as we demo the amazing Oculus hand tracking technology, which lets you put down the controls and start using your hands to play. If you think about it, hands make a great VR controller. We already know how to use them. They never need to be charged. <laughs> they're really hard to lose. And well, they're already paired. Oculus hand tracking technology brings next level immersion to supported VR experiences. Seeing a digital version of your hands in the headset is really cool. There are games like The Curious Tale of Stolen Pets, Waltz of the Wizard, and Elixir. And the list of compatible apps is always growing. Just look in the details section of your favorite apps to see if hand tracking is supported. Our team used deep learning to teach a computer what a hand looked like, what its key points were, and what it looked like when it did things like pinched or poked or made a fist. The four sensors built into the headset do an incredible job capturing your fingers as they move. The results, phenomenally expressive movements and high fidelity gestures. Whoa. Activating it is just a couple of steps in the settings menu. You can switch back and forth with a click. Hand tracking is an evolving technology, so who knows what our developer community will come up with in the future. And for our developers out there, all the SDKs and APIs for you to make this happen in your own creations are available at developer.oculus.com. It's a great way to make VR even easier for people to enjoy. So the next Anyway, yeah, I could see people, like for instance, I talked about musicians earlier, you know, being able to learn how to play virtual guitars. <laughs> in the future, people might not even really know how to play a real guitar, but they might be a, a freaking virtuoso at a, at a virtual guitar because they have the hand tracking and then they have the instrument that is the NFT item in the metaverse. And so the instrument is that person's NFT because it, they would put full claim to that keyboard or that, that guitar or that set of drums that they have. And then they have the hand tracking. And uh, yeah, you know, maybe only they could play that guitar uh, or maybe it could be some kind of fungible nft um, where they could pass the uh, guitar around a guitar circle and let other people play it i mean i don't know it's just such a crazy thought to me but uh, yeah this whole idea i mean how would you maybe there could be some kind of simulated weight and feel of that guitar as you're playing it because how else can you substitute that feel and then your hand wrapping around a fretboard and then the raw, you know, type of uh, skin you get at your fingertips whenever you're pressing down on the strings. I mean, I don't know. Interesting stuff. Can that stuff like that really be simulated? But at least they have the hand tracking part down now, you know. Um, it seems like it's pretty solid. So anyway, Adriano Faria goes on. He says, the convergence of hardware and software technologies will blow anything that came before out of the water. Um, GFX chiplets, micro OLEDs, ray tracing, very focal, very focal, I don't know how to say that, displays, foveated rendering, predictive rendering, low latency wireless, and potential low latency cloud rendering. And I believe foveated is whenever, um, you know, when you're doing those shoot 'em up games, wherever you are looking, is the part that is in focus and stuff like that and it's yeah it kind of has that radial blur around it um so yeah so <laughs> it really crazy stuff and then he goes on to number five content uh, unreal engine five content creation will be cheaper and more accessible than ever with a new wave of game engines these are content creation platforms that were traditionally used only for games but are now being used for cinematic experiences so unreal engine five um huh 
Okay, I don't really know what Unreal Engine 5 is, so let's take a look and see what's up. Um, so, we discussed Unreal Engine as their newest announcement of MetaHuman and what exactly it means for the film industry. Alright, so I, I'm not going to make you watch 8 minutes and 23 seconds of it, but we'll see. We'll get an idea. Today we're going to be discussing Unreal Engine, as well as their newest announcement of MetaHuman and what exactly that means for the film industry. We've already seen some great examples of the engine in action on major productions, but we're also going to touch upon what all of this can mean for all creators out there. Some of this video will be our own speculation of where the future could take us, so if you have your own thoughts or opinions, be sure to share them with us in the comments below. Let's chat. 20 years ago, if you mentioned Unreal, our first thought would have been the epic LAN parties on Facing Worlds or Morpheus. But Unreal, the game, was actually made to showcase Unreal Engine, the development toolkit. And the engine has come a long way since those days. With every new iteration of the engine, we are seeing more and more dev teams shipping out AAA titles produced on the Unreal platform. Now, this is great to hear, but we're also interested in how the Unreal team is growing past the gaming industry to become a software solution for a massive group of creators and artists out there. Currently, the team lists that the engine can benefit a variety of industries, including architecture, automotive and transportation, broadcast, film, training simulations, as well as some cultural experiences. You can visit hyper-realistic museums in VR, or even jump on a recreated Titanic for a pure horror-filled learning experience. Quite simply put, the engine has limitless potential. As creatives and filmmakers seeing this technology evolve, all of this is wildly exciting. We grew up with the idea that films were untouchable. Millions of dollars being poured into big camera rigs, massive light setups, and VFX magic that was so far out of reach that most student films ended up looking like this. Not the greatest. Fast forward to the 2010s, high quality video DSLRs become affordable, personal computers catch up to the process power, and most importantly, Adobe made their creative suite more attainable and just as powerful as any other editing. Right, I'm not going to keep on going with that. If you want to watch it, this thread is in my uh, uh, video description, but it kind of gives you an idea. Um, Unreal Engine and I see U uh, Unity um, world building platforms. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think of this whole, what will it, what will a movie look like in the future? You know, will people be wearing haptic suits? Will it be an experience? Um, will a horror movie, for instance, um, involve pain? You know, um, <laughs> will you put on a suit when you go to a horror movie and you go in with this to this cabin in the woods and whenever a killer comes and converges on you, will you feel that pain? <laughs> like it's, it, it's, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm going way out there, but you know, um, yeah. It's, it's, it seems kind of insane to me. Anyway, uh, Adriano goes on and says, All this means that the near future of VR will bring insanely immersive, passive, interactive, and social experiences inside stunning virtual worlds that must that have persistent and permanent virtual property rights. And then this brings in NFTs as well. And I also think about porn films too, you know? <laughs> like, will, will you get that experience as well, you know, with haptic suits and stuff like that? I mean, it's, it's insane stuff. Like, where is all this industry going? And then especially now that you have NFTs and what I talked about, about the guitar and ownership of it. Um, so content creators will be able to monetize their work through a global permissionless market using Ethereum and other crypto networks. So Ethereum is a base layer under all this. You know, NFTs are built on NF uh, on Ethereum. And there are two types of NFTs. There's, uh, well, there's, okay, there, there's two types of NFTs. Kind of, that, there's a ERC-721 which is non-fungible NFT. And then there's another type of hybrid NFT, which is ERC-998, which is um, some an, an NFT nested within an NFT. So you think of a character or you think of a guitar, right? Think of a guitar and then that's the NFT. And then you have the ERC-998, which might be the guitar strings, um, the, the things that that are uh, accessories to the NFT. Yeah, that's the word I was looking at. Um, yeah, or you might have a kind of fungible NFT that's ERC-1155, um, which is an NFT that is, um, 
guitars plural you know you you, you have multiple instances of a certain guitar and uh, you know you get to pass that around and uh, yeah it's kind of a fungible non-fungible <laughs> type of token um it's a generic nft in a way um so yeah there's there's a lot of different types of, of developments going on and what it exactly means to for something to be unique or fungible or non-fungible and different um erc ethereum tokens uh, standards to kind of accommodate that and these are questions that um are being brought up and are becoming practical issues now about uh, virtual ownership and what type of ownership and exactly what type of product is that you know is that absolutely completely unique or is it something that can be reproduced or is it something completely uh non-fungible like concrete for your building you know like you, a concrete wall for you to build you know a commodity basically you know in today's world is what it would be called and uh, what does that look like in the universe and in the metaverse and then you know how can that be quantified and how can that be uh, valued as well you know um, nft valuation is another huge question or concept that uh, people need to work out but all this stuff is being built on ethereum and right now there's silos between worlds and between you know different uh, metaverses, for instance, Decentraland and, and Somnium Space and CryptoVoxels and Sandbox, and you have Roblox and Fortnite and all these different games and Call of Duty, World of Warcraft. Um, and right now, uh, a common thread between all those could be Ethereum. For instance, you could cash out some items in one world and then go use that Ethereum to buy something in another world. But what if you could transfer one item to another world without it being cashed out and you could use some kind of gun or a sword from one game to another and then it really becomes the game and the unique characteristics of the game that fades out and more the the characteristics of uh just the items in the metaverse that phase in and you just go to different worlds and you get to take your items with you but you say well how would a gun uh from call of duty be useful in world of warcraft <laughs> you know and it, I don't know, you know, I, but it's just something to think about. All right, so there's, he, so anyway, that's an interesting take and a look at some of this technology. So thank you for that, Adriana Faria. Um, this is, somebody says, so how can I capitalize? And he says, Ethereum and other crypto assets that you think uh, will play an important role in the creation of um, the metaverse. So that's how somebody can capitalize on it uh, by investing in Ethereum, because it's all going to be built on Ethereum. Uh, somebody says, I hope the physical VR headsets themselves become more user friendly. Wearing one for extended periods of time puts a lot of strain on your head and neck. And uh, yeah, you have a very good point. So that leads me to this other thread by Adriano Faria. Um, let's go up here. Uh, let's see here. Where did you go? Um, okay, so, okay. Nope, 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 nope. Um, where. This is the other one. Josh Wolf, the good news is the metaverse. Okay, maybe it's this one. Um, okay, so this is by Josh Wolf. All right, so Josh Wolf says, his thread says, the good news, the metaverse is exciting, but not for the reasons most people are talking about. The bad news is odds are the metaverse will be used by IBM in an ad before the year end and further dilute plus erode it as the buzzword BS um, as we all grow adverse to. <laughs> okay. Okay, so to know the future of the tech of the metaverse, it starts with the past of the sci-fi. The gap between sci-fi uh, and sci-fact ever shrinking. Yep, 20 years ago we had Snow Crash. I need to read this book, actually. It sounds really good, um, and I've heard a lot about it. But that was one of the first instances of the metaverse being implemented into sci-fi fiction. All right, 20 years ago is The Matrix. I grew up, uh, and I was a, a freshman at college or you know in high school or something when The Matrix came out. And uh, yeah, it was a mind-blowing movie. It completely uh, busted all genres, and uh, nobody had ever thought about anything like that that I knew of before. And it was just, you know, because everybody was Star Wars or whatever, you know, Star Trek and stuff like that. But then Matrix comes in and just plows it all over. And then so 10 years ago, we had Ready Player One. And so, yeah, all this stuff is mentioned when you talk about the metaverse. So he says, I use the framework of triangles. There are three kinds screens windows and mirrors okay all right interesting let's see where this goes 
So for screens, we go from being hunched over our four inch rectangles, all right, and then still in screens to slapping them screens right on your face to hold them in place real tight with a suction and a strap. And as you saw from that comment earlier, they, uh, they're kind of cumbersome right now. So number six, VR is one form of the metaverse and this rectangle is slapped to your forehead will let you escape reality. And while uh, some will. I'm personally skeptical many people will spend much time in VR. The next rectangle is a window. Take two windows and you get this. Glasses, like an actual rectangle split in two or a window on your face. So this window, drop in some tech in the frames and you'll get AR, augmented reality, which I believe will have much more demand. A layer of uh, useful information on top of augmenting reality um, helps you see hidden things or layers that others have designed for you. So you can see here, you know, directions, GPS telling you where to go. Um, you know, back in the day, everybody thought the nerds wore glasses. Well, now nerds are running the world and uh, you're going to get to see the world through the eyes of nerds. <laughs> so AR glasses for navigation. Look at that. Yes, yeah, so it gives you your ATM, the directions, your coffee shop, everything you want to know um, in the, the comfy little lenses of your glasses. And then maybe contact lenses in the future once uh, glasses become nerdy again. I don't know. Anyway, mirrors are more complicated. So it goes from screens to windows to mirrors. Um, they're more complicated as, as it is my metaphor for mirror world or simulation. One part capturing the world with high fidelity plus re resolution and one part rendering it in simulation as the digital twin of built environment spaces or objects. Okay, he says we'll revisit it. And then number 10, the main difference between VR and AR VR escapes reality to go somewhere else, and augmented reality is stay here plus add. So I said earlier, you know, I don't like the idea of being closed in this VR and escaping. I like to be here. So maybe AR is a solution for that. Um, anyway, the best version of the Metaverse, it ain't Facebook, all right? And the best version of the Metaverse ain't Facebook. It is, at the moment, Tim Sweeney. Epi it is epic. Uh, Tim is taking on Apple, advocates for transparency plus competition, and by appearances plus words, at least seems to want interoperability between universes, Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, all different games. The metaverse that everyone is talking about imagines connecting the different gaming worlds that people spend time plus attention on and adding portability of digital objects. What I was talking about, moving things between worlds, your characters, your inventory, who you are, what you own, in a way creating your digital ID. These are questions are coming up. Like before those other questions I posed about you know, what objects are and how they're valued and you know what different types and you know level of objects things are, uh, their fungibility. If those digital universes were ever to be connect interconnected, they would have an incentive to follow the old adage that people will go wherever they are welcomed and stay where they are well treated. Crappy people make crappy places which send better people to better places. As an aside, all these places, even with the best rules and regulations and content moderation, will simply amplify our primal tribal, our primate, primate tribal behavior. Ever see a noob on Roblox? They get taunted by their kids for having default bacon hair. You do not want bacon hair. Yeah, and I've you know I've experienced this firsthand in some type of Telegram communities, Discord servers. You can tell the ones that just have this negative vibe about them, and then people are real mean to new people trying to learn and stuff like that. And that turns people off, you know, but then there's really good ones. And then those those communities are the ones that end up thriving in the long run. So the best platforms inside the metaverse ought compete as cities do for citizens who create policies, incentives, and induce citizens wanting to spend time and money in them. So just as broadcast content companies do in 2D on screens, Netflix, HBO, Apple, YouTube, via subscriptions, and just as network user-generated content on social media does, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, via minutes of engagement, monetize the advertisers. Wherever people are spending time with other people, it will be a de facto form of social media. And like all technologies, it will be an amplifier. TVs amplify messages. Instagram, TikTok amplify lust, jealousy, and greed. <laughs> the broadcast news always said that with authority, like Walter Conkright, um, I'm here, you're not, now know this. Social media says, I'm here, you're not, now, 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 now. So back to the tech of the metaverse. Rendering comes via the hardware chips, GPUs, and edge chips, and the software engines, Unity, Unreal, which we saw earlier, Godot, uh, with different biz models, respectively, seat license, free with royalty, uh, and open source. Um, so, yeah, rendering and software engines, the Applers are currently popular 
and surely future emergent universes, Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, Apex Legends. The connecting, networking, comm protocols, enabling low latency in real-time massive participation will be led by uh, subspace powered to GenVid Tech. Okay, I'll have to look into those. I don't know what those are. And the payments layer will be a mix of converted in-game currency and crypto. Um, so yeah, uh, just like you have, uh, let's say you have a, a DAO project, you know, and uh, everything's built on Ethereum. You know, you have a bunch of these Ethereum tokens, but then each DAO, for instance, the Bankless DAO has their bank token. Um, you know, uh, each exchange, you know, each DEX, Uniswap has the Uni token, One Inch has the One Inch token, but it's all built on Ethereum. So, and the payments will be a mix of converted mix of in-game currency and crypto. So each game in respect would have their own crypto but it would sit on top of a crypto like ethereum so they in a way might have their own erc20 type of tokens the nft movement is silly at first digital art but it is encouraging more widespread use for identity 3d avatars that have the persistence across the universe and there's a useful analogy gps gps uses three machines satellites to yield a triangulated triangulated point digitally addressed in space time of ground truth location in real space NFTs on Ethereum use many machines to yield triangulated point digitally addressed in time space of ground truth existence in cyberspace. Uh, man, I really need to break that one down, but I don't have time to today, but I need to go back to that. Um, so NFT on Ethereum uses many machines to yield triangulated point digitally addressed in time space of ground truth existence in cyberspace. <laughs> wow. I see the NFT art movement with people investing in silly avatars from Bored Apes plus Beyond being ported to other domains and the NFT providing the Lyser uses content like Marvel would for a character. Um, it's just a bragging right certificate. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on here and I'm out of time. Um, I could go on and on and this could go into the whole um, digital ID conversation and what that means for people collecting POAPs, the proof of attendance protocol NFTs, how that can in a way create an online resume for uh, for people without necessarily giving up any of your actual real life ID information or who you are in the real world. But somebody could see that, you know, you're a part of these different metaverses that you have uh, POAP NFTs that prove that you've attended this or that concert in this or that metaverse. Um, say, for instance, um, I'm part of a guild in the Bankless DAO, and I have these POAPs proving that I've gone to those meetings, and then those are attached to my um, Ethereum address, you know, and then uh, as NFTs. And then I could go into another community and show, hey, you know, I have this background working in this guild over here at the Bankless DAO, and here are my NFTs to prove it. It's like carrying my resume and my credentials with me. So this starts like a whole new standard and system of ID and credentials. And who knows where this could go. And then, you know, same thing when you go from one game to the other. It's no longer really a game anymore, you know. It's it's like it's it's taking your, your virtual um, experience trail with you from one place to another. And then you can prove it. Good or bad, you know, um, what if you start getting to the point where you're not able to scrub, you know, your, your past experiences um, from your your uh, online avatar? You know, what if you're not able to change your online avatar and you're stuck with that one and what you have and your experiences and they cling to you, these NFTs, like like a bad credit score? You know, so I don't know. There's just so many different things and ways to approach it right now. It is open game for everybody. Um, I, yeah, man, I, I'm running. I got to get to work. Um, but this is a topic that I could explore and uh, and talk about, even to myself, for for hours, hours on end. Much less sitting in with maybe another person or a panel of people to talk about it. So, yeah, um, somebody's down here says it's it's just a shame that privacy is an afterthought in all these systems. Um, and then you know. Uh, somebody he says privacy isn't dying; it is dead and died long ago. Uh, no, not necessarily. There's privacy coins, there's a secret network, and things like that. But this whole idea of your NFTs and your pro apps and stuff like that clinging to you um, and following you and your avatar wherever you go, and unless you completely kill your avatar and go to an entirely new Ethereum address, and who knows? You know, maybe there might be some way in the future that will you you can't you know get rid of your avatar once you've um, gotten an Ethereum.
your email address assigned to you. Yeah. Yeah. Weird stuff, man. Um, kind of dystopian in a way. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, um, I, I will get on the road and uh, try to be nice to each other today. And uh, yeah, um, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.